Hello, this is Professor Joseph Holbrook from Latin American Civilization. I'm going to take you through a quick overview of Chapter 1 of our textbook on Latin American Civil Civilization. So let's begin. This is the first peoples of the Americas. And in this chapter, we'll introduce the uh, Native Americans that inhabited the North and South America and Central America before the arrival of Europeans. And no sense did they have an idea that they were entering a new world when the first inhabitants arrived in the Americas. They came to America around 35,000 years ago. Estimates are from between 35,000 years ago to 14,000 years ago. The New World remained as separate from the Old World for about 10 millennia. In other words, 10,000 years. It was uh, two different worlds. Completely separated. Uh, and this is important because diffusion, cultural diffusion, is an important dynamic in the Old World. Uh, inventions in China eventually found their way across through the Silk Road uh, to other parts of the Old World, to Europe and the Middle East, and the same thing in reverse. However, this process did not happen with the Amer Native Americans. The first Americans crossed a land bridge about 20,000 to 15,000 years ago from Siberia into Alaska and what we now know as North America. Excuse me. Uh, they developed subsistence strategies in uh, their agricultural and hunting and gathering practices. Around 8000 BCE, BCE stands for Before the Common Era. This is an alternative designation to BC, Before Christ. It's, it can be used interchangeably. So about 8000 BCE, there was a gradual extinction of large games such as mammoths and horses that had existed in the New World but were uh, hunted to extinction or other environmental concerns that led to their disappearance. A few thousand years later, agricultural, began, agricultural practice began in South America, interestingly, high in the Andes, and the first agricultural product was potatoes. So potatoes, as well as manioc and corn, are New World agricultural products that were unknown to the Europeans before their arrival in uh, the Americas. Around 3000 BCE, Chileans had domesticated guinea pigs, llamas, and alpacas for wool. And of course, the largest domesticated animals in the New World were llamas and alpacas. There were no horses or cows. Some of the subsistence strategies that were followed were fishing, uh, looking for leaves, eggs, insects, lizards, nuts, fruit, whatever game they could trap and kill. They began to plant seeds at propitious locations and return later to harvest a crop as early as 6000 BCE. The cultivation of maize or corn, the early form of corn, began around 3500 BCE, primarily in, this, in Mexico and Mesoamerica. They also began to grow cotton, which they wove into fishnets. As they began to develop an agricultural basis, allowed them to develop sedentary communities and ceremonial centers. With enough food, Native Americans grew sedentary and began to specialize. This is the same process that happened in the Old World, the only thing difference being that it happened more slowly in the New World. From 3000 to 2000 BCE, the earliest structures were built in coastal Peru. Interestingly, despite the fact that the Native Americans crossed from Siberia into Alaska and spread down through North America into Mexico, uh, modern-day Mexico, the oldest beginnings of civilization is found in Peru. The people in coastal Colombia and Ecuador learned to make pottery. Around 1500 BCE, Peruvians began metalworking. In Present-day Mexico, you had a group of people known as the Olmecs. Some uh, scholars believe that they represent a type of mother culture for Mexico, uh, indigenous Mexico. They lived in what now are, are the states of Veracruz and Tabasco along the coast, Caribbean coast of Mexico, 
One of the capitals was San Lorenzo, which dates back to 1500 BCE. La Venta is another one, which flourished between 900 and 400 BCE, about the same time as the early or ancient Greeks. They crafted giant basalt heads as an art form. They also developed a tortilla made from corn. That was their kind of fast food. Grab a tortilla and hit the road. They maintained extensive contacts with their contemporaries. In Peru, you had the Chavan de Huantar uh, civilization, which began around 900 uh, BCE and lasted for about 700 years. It was developed at an at altitude of 9,000 feet in the Andes Mountains. Um, it was primarily a center of religious observances. The population was around 3,000 people. Uh, images have snakes, jaguars, caimans, and other jungle fauna, as well as tropical co crops have been found there. They used hallucin hallucinogens, intoxicants, and they practiced cannibalism. They had expertise and innovation in textile design. Around 200 BCE, they declined, perhaps because of droughts and environmental changes. So here you see a picture of Chavan de Huantar, just above Aspero and below Cerro Blanco. Back to Mexico, modern-day Mexico, you had uh, a civilization that flourished around 500 BCE around a ceremonial center called Monte Alban. It dominated the surrounding areas for a thousand years, which makes one want to make a comparison with the Roman Empire, which, which also lasted about a thousand years, at least in the Western Roman Empire. After 250 BCE, the population reached 15,000, and by 500 AD, or uh, the AD is Anno Domini, or you can also use the CE, which is the common, 500, the common era. That is 500 years after Christ. It grew to 25,000 people. They also had the early stages of language using hieroglyphics. Hiero meaning sacred and glyphics meaning words. Here's a picture of Teotihuacan, which I visited with my wife and daughter back in the early 2000s. It's quite impressive. It was built from 200, uh, around 200 BC and lasted to about 700 AD, again nearly a thousand years. It had 600 pyramids, the largest of which was the Pyramid of the Sun, 215 feet high. The central promenade was called the Street of the Dead and is 150 feet wide and two miles long. There were 100 palaces for priests and dignitaries and 2,000 apartment complexes laid out in a grid pattern which housed the working population. Uh, Teotihuacan also practiced human sacrifice with war captives. A third civilization, uh, apart from the Mesoamerican and the uh, Andean civilization in South America was the Mayan civilization, which existed in the southern part of Mexico, Guatemala, Central America area. Uh, it had no single dominant center. Uh, ex uh, Mayans excelled in math. They had a ahau, or king, and nobility, and upper classes lived in style. They also experienced protracted conflict with communities serving as pawns, in a contest between Mayan superpowers. Trade was not particularly important. They had a decentralized city-state political structure, which makes one think of the uh, classical Greeks with their city-state polis. And left you have a, a piece of uh, Mayan art representing Mayan bloodletting, which was a common uh, medical practice. And there's a lady there who's uh, re releasing blood from her tongue perhaps as a sacrifice, perhaps for medical reasons. Back to uh, the Andes region, you have another civilization known as the Moche, uh, from 600 to about 750 of uh, the Common Era, that is, after Christ. They were warlike contemporaries of the Teotihuacan in Mexico, and they inhabited the river valleys of north Peru. They were excellent engineers, uh, which reminds one of the uh, Romans. They used irrigation and bird guano, or bird, bird poop, as fertilizer. They lacked a writing system comparable to the Maya. 
but they did develop an early form of bronze metalwork, which, uh, interestingly enough, they used almost entirely for art forms and not for weapons, despite the fact that they were uh, warlike. They had a fearsome deity known as the Decapitator, which you see there in the lower left. Moche society declined between 600 to 750 of the Common Era. There's the Decapitator. He doesn't look very happy. And here is the area of Peru, modern Peru along the northern coast where they flourished. And that is a uh, art form representing a, a medical practitioner with a patient. Then you have the Nazca, uh, the famous Nazca towards the southern part of Peru. They were the, uh, sorry, let me back up. You see there on the right, the Nazca lines, they are the ones that have sparked a lot of speculation about aliens uh, that because they had these huge geocliffs, which you can look at today through uh, Google Earth. Uh, recent evidence has indicated that there may have been indicating, indicators pointing to where water sources might have been found. And here we have uh, Tiwakanu, just below Lake Titicaca, which is in modern-day Bolivia. This civilization was founded around 250 BCE, before the Common Era, and flourished in, into the Common Era to about 1200 uh, 1200 BC or 1200 AD in the Common Era. Buildings were fitted together without mortar. They excelled in weaving, pottery, bone carving, and masonry. They herded llamas and alpacas and harvested fish and aquatic plants from the lake. Reduced rainfall led to a decline in 950 of uh, the Common Era. And there you see uh, an arrow pointing to the Wari people, which were south of the Chavan de Huantar group uh, and west of Lake Titicaca. The Wari Empire rose in the 6th century of the Common Era near the modern city of Ayacucho in Peru. It may have been a colony of the Taiwak. Taiwanaku uh, culture. The rulers of the Wari employed administrative tactics later effectively used by the Incas. Like the Incas, they used knotted cords called quipus for keeping track of the census data and inventory. They built roads, relocated subject peoples. They made maize beer from chicha. Uh, in other words, it was corn beer. And then we're back in Mexico. Uh, looking at the city of Tula. The Toltecs uh, flourished in the Common Era from about 900 to 1400 A.D. Uh, they built a city called Tula, about 50 miles from Teotihuacan, around 800 C.E. under Mix Mixcoatl. Uh, they had dominance. They owed their dominance in part to their command of the obsidian trade, and they also were very warlike. They practiced extensive human sacrifices with skull racks and receptacles for human hearts. There was also a cult, a more peaceful cult, religious cult, that emerged among the Toltecs uh, centered around the the god Quetzalcoatl, uh, who did not want human sacrifice but required flowers and but sacrifices of flowers and butterflies. Mixcoatl's son, Seat Acatl, was a devoted uh, devoted follower of Quetzalcoatl, but later was expelled and left, heading east, which was the uh, which lent itself to the legend that benefited Hernan Cortez, which we'll learn about later when he arrived in Mexico. The Spanish conquistador, uh, some of the leaders of the uh, uh, Aztecs thought that he was Quetzalcoatl returning from the east. And here's a picture of Tula and some of the uh, architecture and art it was found there. You see these tall statues that represent the culture of Tula. So that is a quick and a brief introduction to Chapter 1, uh, this, The Peoples of the Americas, and I encourage you to read the chapter, and we will continue uh, this week. Thank you.